I want to talk a little bit about actually saving your rendered files to your file system and also a little bit about using multipass in Corona um, and you, how you can make masks, for example, with a multipass tool. So first of all, let's cover a few basics in the general way how to save your rendering. So it's not about saving your project files, it's about saving your renderings. So one thing you can do, um, which I actually rarely do, is you can directly save your rendering uh, when it's finished to a file on your disk. Um, I don't like to do this usually because um, I do a lot of like pre-renderings and then I just want to save a specific image out of that um, of a series of renderings. So after you've clicked on your render button and if you want to create your final render image, you probably don't want to use the start interactive render, but just the default renderer. So uh, by that, the render settings you set up here in the Corona settings for your final image will uh, be taken into account. So a few things you can set up when you render an image is you can, for example, set a pass limit. So this will limit the number of passes Corona will um, iterate on until the final image is then more or less finished. So you, if you uh, don't type in anything here and leave it to zero, then Corona will just uh, render it limitless. You can also put in a time limit so um, I think in this case, the, if you put in a time limit um, and a pass limit, then the time limit will, uh, or one, whatever case hits first will be, uh, will be used. So if you set a time limit for like two hours, but your um, pass limit is reached after two minutes, then the time limit will be ignored. But if you set your time limit to one minute uh, and you're only at pass 10, then the time limit will uh, be used first. If you, so um, you might want to, for your final render, want to check what kind of pass limit is useful to get a noise free image, or at least to get your uh, image to a noise level, which is um, okay. So you can also type something in here um, to define an, a noise level which should be reached for the final image. Um, I'm not quite sure on the values you have to type in here. Um, I've actually never used the noise level limit for my renderings. I just uh, do a few test renderings and then determine the amount of passes you need. As a rule of thumb, a pass limit of 25 should give you, in most cases, an image which is more or less noise free, or at least to a point noisy where we can use the denoising tool down here to get rid of the um, of this amount of noise which is left on the image. So you can choose between different ones. Um, I generally try to use the Intel CPU AI or the Corona high quality denoiser. And one thing to keep in mind is that the denoiser only works when you hit this render button and not the interactive renderer. Um, we'll also see then that this checkbox is checked and after the rendering is done, the denoising will be applied and your image will be less noisy. Um, yeah, the GI th things we discussed already. Um, you can also do a material override where you can, uh, if you want to do a, like a clay rendering or, or a rendering where you, where we only use a certain material for all the th things in our scene, we can use one material to override all the other materials. Um, other than that, uh, the performance settings you usually don't have to uh, change unless you have some strange problems or very low or long render times. Um, so yeah, I would recommend to only change that if you've read up in the manual of Corona and see what you're doing here actually. So in most cases you don't need to change those performance settings. Okay, so that's a few overall worlds, uh, words, not words, words. And so let's say you want to save your final image to disk. So one thing you can do, you can open up the picture viewer of Cinema 4D. So this is the thing where all the images will be stored and you have a nice timeline of images if you have rendered multiple images. Uh, you don't have this kind of timeline in the um, virtual frame buffer here from Corona unless 
you go to history and say store current virtual frame buffer and then you will have this kind of thing in your um, setup as well and you see a time and how many passes this has taken a quick glance here at the stats we have or it took two minutes and 20 seconds to render this image um, so the UHD cache pre-computation took about one second then the rendering took about two minutes and 17 seconds the denoising was pretty fast actually apparently I don't know uh, but somehow this ended up to two minutes and 19 seconds so that's quite okay for one image um, although this is only rendered in a very low resolution it's only 2080 by 720 so this uh, was just for demonstration purposes you would like to render in a higher resolution probably for your final image but anyhow so this is um, what you can do here with the with this kind of tabs in the post you can do some kind of first post-production color creating things um, what I like to do usually is maybe to load up a lookup table file uh, you might want to tweak the white balance of course the exposure and maybe also what is nice is this kind of filmic um, preset with this you get a little bit nicer shadows and light in your scene as you can see it doesn't look as flat when the filmic is on so this is like default color creating stuff you can do in here and you can click on the plus uh, to add one of those effects to your post processing um, and then you also can do uh, open up or load up a preset if you want to go that way now then if you um, have a look up here you can see we have different kind of passes here so we have the beauty pass this is basically the final image and then we have a couple of other things here so in your case there only might be the alpha mask and I have a custom mask over here and we come to this in a second but first of all let's see um, what we can actually do to save the file so over here you have the save button and there you can save your file to your system so for example um, in my folder you can just save this as a jpeg file you can uh, also save it as a png but if you want to work on it later on in photoshop or in after effects you want to pick a file format which can handle uh, a high amount of bit depth in your image um, so a word about bit depth maybe what you can see here is a comparison between a 32-bit image and an 8-bit image. So basically the number here defines how much color or more precisely how much brightness values you can put into your image. Obviously a 32-bit image will be or have a much larger file size. So keep that in mind. But as you can see here in this uh, quick animation you lose a lot of details in especially bright or especially dark areas in your image if you going the 8-bit way so you want at least go with 16-bit if you want to do some post-processing and color correction on your image and with 32-bit you have like all the freedom and you can really tweak dark areas and um, and bright areas and don't lose too much of uh, image details and image or brightness information in your image so this is why you usually want to go with the open EXR format or maybe with the Targar file format. So those are good choices if you want to save your images uh, with a high bit depth. And then you can just type in a file name and save the image and open it up in Photoshop, for example. So let me show you something um, else here. I don't want to go into too much detail about multi-pass rendering but I want to give you a quick example on what you can do with it. So if you go to the Corona menu and open up the multi-pass menu you will find in the middle the passes you have activated. So in my case the multi-pass is activated by, by default here on top so you have to activate it maybe on your in your case. And then I've added a mask so you can go to this list here and this is all the passes you can add to your rendering um, so what's really important or really useful is to have a mask 
um, pass rendered out. In the case that you want, for example, have a mask for this kind of radio. So the mask would look something like this and you can use that in Photoshop or After Effects to individually color create the radio itself and the background itself on different kind of layers. If you click on the mask, you will see I put in my SK2 radio from my hierarchy over here. Let me move a few windows away so that you can actually see. So my radio is in this kind of group, in this null object, SK2 radio. And then you have to make sure that you say include selection down here. And then uh, Corona will create a mask for this kind of selection. And you can create multiple multiple masks for every object you have in your scene. So then you can later in post uh, basically use the alpha masks to separately color create or refine your object. So if you've done this and then you've rendered your image, you can go to save all and then you can type in radio SK2 for example. And we choose the open EXR format in this case and then go to save. We want to have 16 bits, okay, save to file. And then when I open up the, the file here, you can see we have a rendering of the radio SK2 and I will open that up in Photoshop. Did it work? It didn't work. Okay, let's do it this way. Why isn't it working? Ah, sorry, I had a, another pop-up on the other screen here. So yeah, we can use the uh, alpha channel or transparency channel because I think I don't have any in this kind of case. So let's go with transparency. Um, and then we have another pop-up and this is the important one. It asks you which which kind of color profile it should use. Now it says that it's actually the same color profile, but we're working in a linear color space in Cinema 4D. So you want to use the color profile from the image or which is included in the image. So go with this. Uh, otherwise your image will be too dark later on. So, okay, we have this image open now in uh, Photoshop. So we could do some basic color correction, for example, tweak something. And now we want to separate the radio, use the mask we created. So I will drop in the mask here and use this as alpha. I think it, I think it doesn't really matter, but um, so we have this kind of mask in here. And now if I want only to apply my color correction, which I did here for the radio, I would just uh, copy this black and white image, go to my mask, paste it in, and then um, go back, hide my original mask. And now you can see that if I will change the settings here for my color correction, it will only be applied to my radio. Um, we can also apply the same mask for our image itself. So if I paste the mask in here again, then you can see we have a nice cutout of our radio and we could do a new background. Um, yeah, whatever we, we like to do. So we could do a gradient, for example, whatever. So this just a quick demonstration of multipass and how you can, or what you do usually with the final image. Um, so you probably want to save your image as a open EXR or TGA file uh, with a high bit depth and then go to your favorite post-processing tool, maybe Photoshop or After Effects to do some post-processing or further color correction on your image.